Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a German theologian and pastor in the 1930s and 40s. Bonhoeffer wrote numerous books that are used by many Christian scholars, even today. He lived a life furiously changed by the gospel. He often talked about cheap grace. Cheap grace is a grace that forgives you, but does not call you to be changed. This type of grace is not even really grace, but a cheap, watered-down version of the gospel. What we need is the real gospel that forgives us of sin, but also changes our sinful hearts. It is true that we're saved by grace through faith. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8-9 to says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. You and I could never be good enough to earn salvation. We could never try hard enough to receive salvation. When it comes to truly being saved, you and I, no matter what, we cannot try to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps and say that we're saved now. It took the complete work of God to save you from your sin. You cannot boast in your own strength because your salvation comes from the cross of Christ. While you and I are saved wholly by the grace of God, we also go through a process called rebirth. Jesus talks about the new birth in John 3. While talking about the rebirthing process, Jesus mentions Ezekiel 36, verse 25 to 27, which says, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you, and I will give you a new heart, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. This talks about how when we are saved, God will give us a new heart. Our old heart of sin is thrown out. Our new hearts are touched by God. Our new hearts are changed and molded by the Lord. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we become more like God. You see, when you accept Jesus Christ into your life, He begins to transform you. This is the process of sanctification, which is the action of being freed from sin. So you'll find that the sin which once had a strong hold over you, well, you'll find a new power to resist it. You'll find that you have a newfound strength to fight off those sinful urges. The gospel does not just save us and send us to heaven, but is the message by which God changes our hearts. Have you ever picked up a stone? I'm sure you have. Next time, try squeezing that stone. No matter how hard you try, you will not change the shape of that stone. It's too hard and tough. That is our hearts before we meet Jesus and go through the rebirthing process. However, after we meet Jesus, we get a new heart that is soft and pliable. It can be changed and shaped. God is calling His people to be changed and shaped by the gospel. Since we have a new heart, we can be changed. The real gospel of Jesus Christ will challenge and convict you. It will lead to a change in your sinful habits and cause you to repent. The gospel does not teach you that you are forgiven, now keep living the way you were. That would be the cheap grace that Dietrich Bonhoeffer talked about. This is the cheap grace that says you're forgiven but does not call you to be changed. However, real grace? Real grace teaches us to turn away from sin, to sacrifice, to be humble, and love others as we love ourselves. Since the gospel calls us to change, we must reject the sugar-coated gospel. This is the gospel of cheap grace. This gospel teaches mercy and grace, but has no call to repentance. The sugar-coated gospel will talk about blessing and prosperity, but does not call you to love your neighbor or to sacrifice. The sugar-coated gospel tries to convince you that everything will go well after becoming a Christian. The real gospel teaches us that life often gets harder after following Jesus. But despite the many afflictions of the righteous, the Lord delivers out of them all. One of the reasons people often preach the sugar-coated gospel is because they're worried that the real gospel will offend other people. 
if they tell people they need to repent, that will turn them away from Jesus. While this does an excellent job of keeping those people at peace and tickling their ears, it does not change the heart of the hearer. The true gospel can pierce any hardened heart. By not calling people to repentance but just mercy and grace, you're robbing the gospel of its power. It's better to offend people now by preaching the full gospel instead of later as they realize they never heard the full message and may be on their way from God to hell. The words of Jesus in Luke 9 may speak most clearly on this. Luke 9, 23 to 25 says, And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? If we want to follow Jesus, we must deny who we are and follow Him. That means His will comes before our own. It means that we repent of our sin and follow the way of life that Jesus states. Even if we gain the whole world, we will die, and none of that comes with us. We will all be for nothing. All that matters is what we have done for the kingdom. We, as followers of Jesus, must reject the sugar-coated gospel that many try to present and hold tight to the only true gospel that can save us from sin. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is Romans 1, verse 16. It reads, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Listen to those words. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. A lot of people in this world have things that they're proud of. And equally, a lot of people have things that they're ashamed of. Now, when it comes to us as children of God, are we ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are we ashamed to say that I am a Christian who believes in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? Are we ashamed to say that I am a Christian who believes that one day the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first? Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Are we ashamed to tell our co-workers things like, I believe that heaven is a real place. Hell is a real place. And if you reject Jesus Christ, you'll spend eternity in hell. But if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you will enter eternal life. Saints, are we ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are we ashamed to tell our friends and family that we all need to turn towards Jesus Christ and repent? For the kingdom of God, it is at hand. As believers, we should not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We should not be ashamed of the gospel because the devil and the world, oh, they are aggressively spreading a message of deception. The devil in this world is aggressively trying to lead people away from the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, it is time that we, as believers of Jesus Christ, stand up and declare to the world that there is a Savior. There is someone who can set you free if you're bound. There is a Redeemer, and His name is Jesus Christ. Saints, we should not be ashamed of the gospel, but Christians must stand up and fight for the gospel. We must rise as sons and daughters of the Most High and proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. We must proclaim, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, 
for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. And so I encourage you, be bold. As the voice of the world gets louder, the voice of the church must also become louder. The voice of you and I as believers must also be louder. And we must tell every soul we can that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is King. So saints, don't be silent. Refuse to be silenced by the world. Tell them of Jesus. Speak of Jesus. Shout about Jesus. And do not, do not ever be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ.